This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on that later, provided none of these spiders end my career first. There are 50,000 species of spider in the world. Some toxic and deadly, some cute and cuddly, but out of the bunch there are bound to be some really odd ones. And they're not only restricted to the tropics either. The US isn't necessarily the most exotic location you can come across these eight-legged creatures, and we have a fair share of strange spiders here. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and today I want to show you some of the absolute strangest spiders we have here in North America. And trust me, some of them are living closer to you than you think. This is a little flatty, a crescent-eyed spider. Now, they're fast, so I gotta move quick. What would you do if I told you there was a spider that could fly? Well, in the case of the flatty spiders of the genus Selenops, this is kinda true. Have a look at this creature's anatomy. You can see why they're called flatties. They're extremely, extremely flattened, but they can also use that appearance to press really flat against the bark, where they would blend in perfectly. See that modeling there? They look just like they're part of lichens or even just the general bark texture. And their prey items, lots of little insects and smaller spiders that could be found right in this environment, wouldn't be able to see them. You know, notice those little eyes. They're called flatties. They're also called crescent-eyed spiders. And there's that little crescent of eyes on the top of his head there that sticks out just a little bit from the rest of his body. That allows him to have a really good field of view when he's sitting there hunting, waiting for prey to walk by. Nothing gets past this spider. The crescent-eyed spiders are the fastest on Earth. In the tropical and subtropical environments they call home, they are the lightning-fast hunters of the tree trunks. But what happens if they overdo it on their speed and fall off the structure they're hiding on? It's simple, they just glide back on. They don't have wings, but their flat body plan enables them to direct their fall and control themselves back to safety, rather than leave themselves to the mercy of whatever predators could be lurking below. It's the only kind of spider and the only arachnid we've been able to see that can actually control its descent during a fall. And uh, while it's not technically flying, you know, we could say that it is falling with style. That's one thing that makes these spiders absolutely, unbelievably unique. While the crescent-eyed spiders aren't dangerous to people, there is a spider that the jury is still out on. Lurking in the deserts of the southwest, and a lot closer to civilization than you'd think, is a dusty little spider that hides in the sand. But it has a very similar role in the deserts of North America to that of one of the world's most dangerous spiders, the six-eyed sand spider. It's really small. These are not big spiders. But that is the desert sand spider. And the craziest thing about it is we don't know a whole lot about it. They're really, really strange spiders. What they'll do, they actually tend to sit out in these like, sandy, rocky environments. It looks like they seem to hide more underneath loose rocks that have some space underneath from what we've been able to see in the field. And they basically cover themselves in little sand particles. It gives them immaculate camouflage. Very little is known about these spiders, except that they're lightning fast. Since they're never far from cover, studying them is not the easiest task because they tend to disappear on you. No one has ever been bitten by one because thankfully they're not very aggressive, but that also means we really don't know what their venom can do. Their deadly tropical counterparts are known for having one of the most potent cytotoxins in the arthropod world, able to break down complex animal tissues and even cause organ failure. These guys, we really don't know. One strange clue to their biology, though, is actually their eyes. While they don't have six eyes like the recluse spiders, they actually have eye shine like the wolf spiders. Even though these spiders eluded me for days, I was able to finally catch one by seeing its little eyes glittering back at me in the dark of the desert wash. Due to this, it's actually thought they may be distantly related to wolf spiders, but we don't know that for sure as of yet. Either way, being able to discover these little tricks for catching them in the field has proven super useful because when I'm searching for the weirdest and most elusive creatures in my adventures, it helps to have experts out there with me. But sometimes I'm on my own, which means I need to think like a scientist if I want to succeed. Luckily, there's a free and easy way to learn just that. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively. Through their courses in scientific thinking, you'll see how the world is full of observable patterns and learn how to seek them out for yourself, just like how they helped me to find clues of weird creatures living nearby. Through low-pressure, hands-on activities, Brilliant will show you how to use creative problem-solving to unlock the secrets of not just our natural world, but technology and math. And it goes 
right at your own pace. Whether you're a complete beginner or ready for some advanced topics, they adapt their courses to your needs so you can feel challenged and have fun at the same time. But don't take my word for it. Act like a scientist and test it out for yourself completely free for a full 30 days at brilliant.org slash mywildbackyard or using the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription, and you'll be helping a brand that helps make this channel possible. Try Brilliant today. It's pretty cool. And what's also pretty cool is spider venom, or the lack thereof. Oftentimes, we call spiders that aren't dangerous to humans non-venomous for simplicity's sake. But most spiders actually do use venom to subdue their prey, except for one family of very weird little spiders that I guarantee are living near you, the hackled orb weavers. Check this out. It's so small, you can't see on the camera, but this is a really special spider. Despite building orb webs, they're not really related to true orb weavers. It just turns out that over millions of years, many different lineages of spiders have found that it's just a really useful web shape. But the webs of these spiders are even more special. And the reason they're called a hackled orb weaver is because their web is totally different than any other species of spider on the planet. Most spiders spin a very sticky adhesive web, but these don't have any stickiness to their web whatsoever. Their web is actually tangled and twisted, and it's like got all kinds of weird stringy textures to it. And what that actually does is it ensnares insects because they actually get completely physically tangled in the web. Without venom, the hackled orb weavers have to get creative. Turns out they actually use their super gnarled web as a strangulation device. Device. They wrap their prey super tight until it asphyxiates, and then they start to eat. This means they can only capture insects small enough that they can't escape. So these spiders have stayed very small throughout their evolution. The hackled orb weavers aren't the only ones that get super creative with webs. Have a look at this. What I've got right here is a purse web. Living in this nest is by far one of the weirdest spiders in this part of the world. Purse web spiders are actually more closely related to tarantulas than any of the other spiders in this video because they're part of the megalomorphae group. These primitive spiders have fangs that fold downwards, and in the case of the purse web spider, they're huge. Those scary looking fangs and the stout drab appearance of the spider make it look a lot like one of its formidable cousins from down under, the Sydney funnel web. Now, we don't think the venom of this spider is that harmful to people, but we really don't know a whole lot about it either. And with fangs like those, I really wouldn't want to take a bite. The purse web spider isn't the friendliest, that's for sure. It lives an almost entirely subterranean lifestyle in its silk tube, pretty much only leaving to look for mates. They seem to like to build their nests next to structure trees, logs, and rocks, and usually in heavily wooded areas. I've never found them far from water, so it's possible they need a decent amount of humidity in the substrate they nest in, but I don't know that for sure. What I do know is their horrifying fangs actually serve them well in this subterranean life. See, this tube isn't just for show. Insects climb up the tube, sending vibrations all the way down the burrow to where the spider is hiding. The spider will then scurry up the tube and stab the insect from inside using those super long fangs. It's like I always say, the appearances we see on creatures can inform us of their biology, and the fangs of the purse web are no exception. For this next spider, see if you can figure out how its bizarre appearance helps it to survive in the wild. What I've got right here is an ogre face spider. Have a look at that spider right there. That is one of the most special arachnids we could have possibly found. Probably saying, Spencer, that doesn't look all that special. It looks kind of like a daddy long legs with some extra markings or something on it. Why is this worth paying any attention to? I'm glad you asked because this has probably one of the weirdest biology of any spider I've ever seen and probably one of the weirdest and coolest looking faces I've ever seen. They get their name the Ogre Face Spider from that really unusual face they have with those giant bulbous eyes. They almost look like they're not supposed to exist or something, like, like someone had just created a cartoon spider or something. These guys do not look real. This spider's eyes are perhaps some of the most unusual eyes on any spider because they pretty much shed them every single night. These guys are primarily nocturnal and they're part of a family of spiders called the net casting spiders. What they'll actually do, they use those long legs and they'll kind of sit there with a net of web between their front two pairs of legs and they'll snag flying insects out of the air. You know, usually they'll be sitting like on vegetation. Unlike a lot of other spiders where they're just kind of sensing by feel, 
these guys are actively looking for all kinds of flying insects after dark. And those eyes are the key to how they actually see. They have these super, super sensitive cells in the back of their eyes. But because they're so sensitive, when the sun comes up in the morning, they actually get fried. The amount of light that you see during the day is too much for their eyes to handle. They actually are literally blinded when the sun comes up. And then every night, as soon as the sun goes down, they actually regenerate that layer, just like a, a lizard regenerates its tail, but hundreds of times faster. They're actually regrowing all these cells that they use to be able to see even the tiniest bit of movement after dark. Ridiculously insane, making them one of the most special spiders on the planet. Spiders can be scary, and the weirder they look, the more frightening they can be. But even these odd specimens really want nothing more than to be left alone in the hidden little corners of the habitat they call home. The ogre face spider spends most of its time hiding inside palmettos and other vegetation during the day, waiting for nightfall. And while it's really unlikely they ever will bite, funny enough, their closest relatives are those completely non-venomous hackled orb weavers. So we would assume a bite from an ogre face spider wouldn't be that serious. At the end of the day, these spiders are just simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe. And if we give them their space, they'll give us ours. So if you see one of these weird spiders, just let it go about its business and appreciate a fleeting encounter with a strange creature from the secret world, because weird or not, they're important parts of the ecosystem that surrounds us every single day. And these spiders are weird, but, but this isn't the weirdest that the world of arthropods actually has to offer. If you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole of really strange invertebrates, check out this video right here, where I showcase some of the strangest insects that you've ever laid eyes on. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.